They call me traitor, snitch, spy. His eminence personally granted me the strength to further his work. We heal as one. Set him up for the kill. Rip him up. Natural barrier. Clear the air. To wither. You sit. Soft time to let loose. We heal as one. Set him up for the kill. Rip him up. I know what I need to do. I must destroy you for the Vizier and for King Joker! Clear the air. We heal as one. Unleash! I nature defends me. Wear them down. Breathe it in. We heal as one.
Hello guys and welcome to the channel, this is Beaver Roll. In today's video we are updating my Power Untamed build. And in my opinion this is one of the best if not the best Power build you can play for Open Wallet BVE. It have an abundance of all resources that you could need, survivability, um, boons, damage, cleave, healing, every tool in your disposal. And like always, we're gonna have timestamps. You're gonna go into everything in details, build gear options, and also I'm going to compare it with my other builds to show you what reasons you could possibly play this build for, if not only for fun and enjoyment. So without further ado, let's get right into the traits. So we are running skirmishing, nature magic, and untamed. For the skirmishing, the miners give us swiftness and fury on weapon swap inside combat which will give us a huge amount of both those boons. If you keep rotating your weapons of cooldown, this is almost a permanent fury alone. And even if you don't, you're gonna find other sources of even those boons, so it's very easy to have, and it's a very welcome addition to the build. The last minor trait is Hunter's Tactics. It gives you increased critical damage by 15% and critical chance by 10% if you are flanking. However, on Defiant Boss, enemies as you can see the tooltip itself got changed attacking from behind or the side which is flanking or striking a defiant foe because basically any defiant foe is considered flanking all the time you don't need to be behind them or anything it's always gonna trigger any trait any sigil anything that require a flanking and flanking is hitting an enemy from any side but not the 45 angle in front of them however like we said if you're fighting bosses champion or legendary on this build you're gonna be just fine, you don't need to spin around them or do anything that we used to do like for Shore Boringer or whatever. Now for our choices, the first line is bleed which is a condition thing so it doesn't really matter, doesn't add as much to damage so I didn't put it and trapper we don't run any trap so I went with more sources for vigor. Whenever you successfully evade an attack you will gain a huge amount of vigor on an 8 second cooldown, so almost permanent figure from this trait alone and we have other sources for it even. So it doesn't matter what you run in this line, you can even go for the bleed at this point, it's up to you. Like you don't even have to run primary reflexes. And we have a huge amount of boon duration in this build, that's why you're seeing uh, really big numbers with this stuff. Now for the other line, you can go with spotter to give fury to yourself, your bet, or even allies around you in the open world, um, participating into the boon. Uh, stuff, but that lower your damage comparing to Strider String. That's why I went with it. Besides, like I said, Fury is technically permanent on our build, so we don't really need Spotter. And it grants us 120 power permanent, and if you run Sword, which you can with this build, you will be getting an extra 120. And every time you successfully evade an attack, you gain Might. So now every time you successfully evade you will gain vigor and might if you run in those both those traits if you run the bleed of course you don't get this now for the last choice this is the main reason why we run skirmishing to begin with which is vicious quarry so this trait give you fury every time you get hit if your health was lower than 75 percent on an internal cooldown of two seconds the fury of our boon duration go to seven seconds and above which mean it's going to be contributing a lot to the fury intake that you can have However, that's not the main reason. The main reason is that whenever we have Fury, which like I said on this build, it will be permanent, we gain extra 250 ferocity and Fury in general to us will grant us 15% more critical chance to a total of 40%. So Fury no longer grant you 25 critical chance, it actually grant you 40 with the ferocity that it can add to you. Now for Nature Magic, this trait is mainly focused on supporting the bit and controlling the boons. It's it's very aggressive about the boons and the healing and everything around it. So for the miners, every time you use a beast skill, and remember what a beast skill is, it's a skill you get to control for the bit. And as you can see in the tooltip right above, it say beast. While if you go into any other bit skill, it doesn't show that. So this is a beast skill. For the turtle, this is a beast skill. So anytime you use a beast skill, you will grant regeneration to anyone around you. Considering you and your bit in a solo environment, you will be granting this amount of regeneration. And it is close to permanent easily. And the other one, a minor, you get fortifying bond, which means any boon you get, your bit will get a modified copy of it for the duration that it showed in this tooltip. So let's say you get this regeneration for 19 seconds. 
your bet will not only grant it to itself, it will gain an extra 11 seconds from this one. Let's look at it for example. So here is Jacaranda, I'm going to use her beast skill and see the amount, it's a total max out of uh, the regeneration it gave it to itself. Because it didn't only grant it from being an ally, she gained a copy for the modified duration from fortifying bond. And that's go to any boon you will have. Uh, whether it's might, whether it's fury, anything the bet will get a copy for. And that's why we are running the healing skill uh, we heal as one. It's a command skill that will grant you a copy of your bet and grant the bet copy of your boon. So you will copy the boon the bet have and the bet get a copy of the boon you have. However, the bet already got a copy of the boon you have from fortifying bond, which means it will put huge amount of boons on it and then you get another copy of it yourself. And it's a very easy way to get boons for maximum duration and even get 25 stacks of might so easily from uh, just a few sources if you use it. Now for the last miner we gain lingering magic and it give us and our bit 240 concentration point which add to our boon duration and make our uh, regeneration effect heal for extra 25% which even add a little bit more to our healing. We have multiple healing sources. This build can be very tanky and heal itself in one second to maximum health, even if you're almost dying. So Bountiful Hunter is our first choice and it give us an increased damage for every boon on us. And that goes for both us and our bit. So if you have a very strong and damaging bit like Jacaranda that can hit for very heavy damage and you can give it to almost every most at least boons of the game. Let's say like you have 10 boons up on you and your bit, you get extra 10% in damage and your bit get extra percent in damage. So for a build like that, you will always have your bit alive and strong and doing its own damage. It's surviving, it's healing. It's very, very well if you're really into bit blaze. And our second choice is evasive purity. And the main reason I'm running this instead of um, regeneration and healing from regeneration on the Warhorn, for example, is the only weakness we have in this build is how it handles condition damage. There is a lot of condition going around in BVE, or even corrupting boons if you're fighting some of the awakened, stuff like that. You always want your build to be perfect. Remember, this is a part of the best build series, which means we want stun break, condition cleanse, damage, survivability, tanking, everything possible, cleave. So we need a way around condition. And to be able to dodge, and every dodge, no internal cooldown because it got removed from this trait, every dodge will cleanse you of one condition to damage you and one that it doesn't. So like vulnerability and burning, uh, cribble and confusion, something like that, depending on what you have on you. And you gain like around 5 seconds or something like that, you gain a dodge, which means it's a reliable condition cleanse every 5 seconds if needed. So that's why we are in face of purity. And the last trait is invigorating bond and it grants us an extra chunky heal amount and huge amount of protection and another source for vigor. It's for us and everyone around us. And the healing is good, the vigor is nice, we already talked about why we need too many dodges if possible, and the protection will make you able to tank incoming damage from enemies or mobs in general also. So you have multiple layers of tanking in this build and another multiple layers of healing, while a bit most of the time will be tanking for you anyway, so survivability is really great with a build like that. And it's on a 20 second cooldown when you use a beast skill. This trigger effect happens when you use a beast skill. So now you will get those effects, the healing, the protection, the vigor, and you will get the regeneration also. Those are the things that will happen when you use a beast skill. So something like Jacaranda's roots and something like the turtle uh, bubble. And remember the turtle will give you a huge amount of protection to begin with. So using it will be stacking protection almost indefinitely. As you can see, the protection is insane and she can give it to herself permanently because every time she gives us protection, she gain a copy of it. So the maximum duration is 30 uh, seconds for most boons and that means uh, she just keep locking it to herself until uh, it just start counting down. And I only have like 10 seconds almost coming of cooldown and the bit have even more than that. So turtle easily, if you keep yourself in her zone, she will give herself permanent protection when you use her. Now for untamed choices and traits. So 
First, we get uh, basically the only access to the Unleash Ambush skill and we running my normal choices is Hammer and uh, Axe so you get the skills that depend on it for the first minor and for Natural Fortitude, the next minor you get an increased vitality point and you get the effect of the spores, the siphoning life uh, and damage whenever you use an Unleash Ambush skill which is a huge chunk of healing now so you gain regeneration, you gain more healing, you gain healing from this and now you also gain healing from the Unleashed Ambush skill with the last minor is Vow the Untamed the best trait for Ranger probably, at least a minor if we're talking which lowers the incoming damage on you by 25% the power damage and increase outgoing damage when you are unleashed so if you are unleashed you do more damage by 25% if you're bit unleashed you lower the incoming damage by 25% so most of the time you want to be unleashed on a build like this this is not a condition build, this is a power build so it increases your damage significant however if you need a tank, if you immediately need it to survive if you've seen an incoming huge hit from the enemy you couldn't avoid like if you're doing a bounty and it do as a projectile target thing and you didn't have a dodge simply unleash your bit just like that and that hit coming to you will be lowered by 25% now not only that if you had enough time to the cooldown to pass between unleash you will gain the protection from restorative strike so it's a 25% and also the 33% of the protection or if you had protection from you from any other source that means a huge amount of damage reduction is accessible now for our choices I go with nature shield for getting barriers on using any cantrip skills which add a little bit to this tanking if you really need it to be bruisery right in the face of the enemy and that's mainly because this is a condition trait so it doesn't really matter it's about disable it's nice it will even be very strong if you do most of your CC uh, while you're a bit unleashed because it will both slow and break the fines bar way faster however we have an insane amount of cc to begin with i don't care what legendary you're fighting you will always break the defiance bar eventually even if it took a little bit of time so it doesn't really matter this much besides some of our cc will be more toward our unleash so it will put the poison uh, that's also for gaining a boon that we talk about in the next trait so I didn't find this trait matter the last one will add more damage will give you 25% more damage the first unleash skill for the bit uh, venom's outburst it's really good to have when you're moving between fast weak mobs that you want your bit to cleave very fast to you and boot blind so those mobs will also be affected by the blind it's very good to play around with it is a considerable choice if you want but however being able to access more barriers in the build adding again to more in our tanking felt a little bit more rewarding especially that in the full dbs uh, like for rotation if you're really fighting it doesn't add this much uh, blinding outburst but it's up to you you can choose anything uh, at least between those two now for the second choice we go with enhancing impact this trait will make any disable when you daze when you stun when you knock down and we have a lot of access to those that you will do to the enemy on an internal cooldown of one second will give you boon depending on your stat what does that mean so if you trigger a cc while your bit is unleashed let's say you use warhorn 5 which will daze anyone around you in this state you will gain stability if you are unleashed like this and use Warhorn 5, you will gain quickness. So that's basically how it works. And that's why I said most of the time, if you run debilitating blow, you will trigger Warhorn 5 while you're unleashed because you want the quickness. You want to add your damage more. You have multiple sources of stability. So unless you're wanting to get stability now or you're expecting a CC, you will always choose a quickness which means you would trigger the poison and that's why I said this trait is not really worth it and you can do some tricks with it like if you want to trigger the um, hammer CC for example it's only accessible while you're bit unleashed but it can land while you are unleashed basically you do the knockdown but before it land you can switch state and that will make the knockdown land while you're unleashed so you'll trigger the quickness and the same thing goes for days also something like that and as you see I gain quickness this stability is from the unleash ambush skill not from the skill itself and you can do the same for the knockdown as you see quickness so it always the skill that you started casting will be the one that land on the hammer not 
uh, the state you're in. If you cast the skill while you're bit unleashed, it will trigger this effect even if it landed while you're inside this effect and vice versa. If you started the skill inside unleash this state, it will land the effect of it like the boons from this one, not the knockdown, even if it landed while you're already in this form. I made a video before in explaining how to play Untamed, I explain those things in detail, you really should check it out, I will be putting in the description. Now for the last trait, it's our magnificent trait Restorative Strike, one of the best traits in the game. And this trait will give you access to Restorative Strike buff that will appear on your character for 4 seconds, 33% of any power damage you're doing, outgoing damage, will turn to healing, and will give you also protection. This trait, even if it doesn't show on it, have a 10 second cooldown. As you can see, it works either while you're getting in or out of this stat. So here, I have the buff. I leave, I don't have the buff. It's just a 4 second and it will go. I go again, I don't get it, I go again, I don't get it, but now I will leave probably best about 10 seconds, and as you can see, I get it again. So it have around 10 second cooldown. And it can significantly fail your health. This is a power build and have in some insane bursts. So you can literally fail your health from one point to maximum in like two seconds of those four, not even the four seconds, if you really time it well. And usually I would try to really time it well if I need a lot of healing, like basically try to use Hunter's Call with it always, because it can land this damage while you're casting even another skill. So if you, for example, cast this skill and immediately enter uh, Unleash State, it will hit, even if you cast it before changing state, it will land while you already have the restorative strike effect on you, like that. So it will give you the damage of it as healing. So be a bit creative in how you play it in general. Since we talked about the traits, let's go about the gear. I run full Divinar on this build, except my weapons because I don't have access to Divinar, I guess, but you can run even more to get as close as possible to 100% point duration. So do you need 100%? Technically you don't, however, it's better to have it, especially if you got stuck in one weapon for whatever reason, you get seed, you mess up for some reason, you get your boon corrupted against an awakened mob or something like that. It's better to have longer boons uh, than in to have an exact rotation in order to keep them up. So for me, I found it very comfortable to run like that, especially that you can't really change this much your DBS by simply increasing power and lowering difficulty. Divinar is a 4 stat gear, which means in total it will give you higher amount of stats than running something like Berserker. So you have to run point duration this build. It is as simple as it, something like to 50%, something like that. So why not focus more on the gear? And that's why I run a rune that doesn't have point duration on it. Since if I run both, I will go more than 100%. So why not run a rune that would give me the highest stat as possible while running uh, my gear having boon on them. So that's why I went with Divinar on the gear and I went with Scholar rune. It's very close in damage if you run something like Dragon Hunter rune also. It will be having the ferocity hearts and the power stuff like that. But I went with the safest option to increase power more and it is Scholar rune. I run also power infusions and... Also, my trinkets are all uh, Divinar, everything. Now, for my weapon, I run them Berserker. You can run them Divinar. I think it will get you closer to 100%. It's really up to you. You can even change the stat uh, to most half Berserker, half Divinar. It's really up to you. It's not really set in stone, but you need boon duration. So even the rune can go for something like boon duration to mix it up. If you don't have access to Divinar or you find expensive, you don't have uh, neither ascended or legendary gear and you wanted to run Berserker armor, you can run a rune with uh, boon duration. Something like fireworks, it will give you 25 boon duration, 25% and will give you some power. So something like that is probably what I would suggest the most. But like I said, my weapons are Berserker. I run Sigil of Generosity and Cleansing. Remember when I said we struggle against conditions this build. Yes, we can have access to barriers. Yes, we can have access to a huge amount of healing. And we have one trait to cleanse us, which is this one. Since we are not running Cleansing Unleash, we want the boons. This is a boon build. We want the quickness. We want the stability. So this trait is really a waste of potential. However, we run Evasive Purity. And that's why I went with Generosity and Cleansing on my web. The last uh, cleansing 
tool that you have is actually running mutate condition it will cleanse all the boon you it will just save your life and give you vulnerability instead there is a stable thing right now to increase your damage significantly a lot of people will go for in a solo build which is sigil of frailty so if you run sigil of frailty you will gain two stacks of vulnerability for eight seconds on an internal second cooldown of only two seconds on an enemy when you flank it however remember defiant bar foes are counted as flanking all the time and that will increase your damage one can have it depending on the rotation or the stat of the fight how accurate you can keep your rotation something like that so it really depends on the fight but it can go as high as at least one k and a half it's like increased to almost 10 percent uh, damage from this sigil alone so feel free to use it if you want but i want this build to be able to survive in any situation and survivability is key here against condition so i'm running generosity and cleanse you can change uh, generosity for frailty and count on active condition cleanse if you need like switching weapons uh, or can even go the other way around and only counting on cleansing by dodging in case you needed to but i run it with generosity and cleansing and you can already have about 15k dbs completely solo so i'm increasing it to 16 or something like that it's not really worth this much so i keep those two and i'm running hammer and warhorn and axe you can switch the hammer for sword and axe Sword would give you a decent mobility, or equal to the hammer, or even because the lower cooldown it's a little bit faster, it will give you very decent damage. Access to CC from the Unleash Ambush on is a auto attack here, and the axe will give you multiple buckets of hits that will cleave everything around you and do some really decent amount of vulnerability. So if you run it with the axe, you will not gain the extra damage from variety since you have multiple sources of vulnerability to upkeep it most of the time. So the increased damage from variety will be quite small. And you also gain an extra CC to trigger this trait. So more CC from here and also from the auto attack. And the hammer have CC from here and uh, this one. But most of the time you will choose the higher damage. So you will not be triggering the boon a lot as much at least as the axe. So it is more damage, because it also gives you more power from this trait. However, you lose the survivability the hammer can give you and the more comfortable play style in my opinion. So the hammer can give you barrier for each target you hit from this skill and an initial barrier, which can make it quite a bucket uh, of uh, barrier if you're fighting uh, among a lot of mobs. This one also will give you barrier when you interrupt enemies. They can build up really high and really fast, combining that with the barrier we can get from... Uh, any cantrip skill it can be really good to survive if you needed to and can grant you protection but we already have an abundance of it but it's a way how you can resource yourself so if you don't need to for the bits for example you always want to be in jacarant your bit do an insane amount of damage so you want a bit that can actually do damage because of all the boons it get and all them the fire so you don't want to switch bits if possible which means you will not access the protection from turtle. This protection and the change to turtle meant to. If you want to keep your bit alive in case it's going to die, you change to it. If you want to tank a lot, if you're being hit in by projectile, it's a bit for survivability. Other than that, you don't switch to it ever, which means you don't access this protection. And most of the time, you want even the higher damage, so you want to access the protection. You want the quickness from this one and the might, so you want to access the protection. But if you need it, you will choose what resource you go for first. So before switching the bit, I would choose to hit some of the hammer skills to survive first instead of switching my bit to turtle, something like that. And instead of also losing the huge amount of might that we can copy from our bit from exploding spores in order to gain protection, I would use the hammer skill first. So you lose a lot of survivability comparing to go with the sword, that's why I would stick with the hammer. And it is more fun to be honest, at least in my opinion. Now for the relic. So honestly, relics for power in general feel like it quite sucks. And none of them really good. Only you can go with the safest option, something like relic of the thief, which I hate and I will get to why, and relic of the dead eye. Relic of the Dead Eye felt quite silly, it will work for the burst because it will work anytime you use a cantrip skill, it will give you for 8 seconds a 10% increase in damage. It's a small burst that you can do while you have an other modifier that will count with, and then it will go away. Relic of the Sea is more reliable, it happened around the time, but you are quite spammy in this build, so you can simply hold on on using skills 
unless it almost the effect disappear on your character and use another skill because it happened whenever you use a weapon skill that has a recharge for you so it didn't feel this um, effective so for me I actually went for Relic of Cirrus you can go for it or for the Thief it's probably the best I would recommend to you but I went for Cirrus Cirrus will do few hits around you that will convert bones into condition so it put more into making this build able to remove huge amount of bones from enemies. We do that a lot for the cryptus and drift hunting and stuff. You need bone removal in BVE and this build have a lot of it. Because you can do that with your bit skill here. You can do that from the unleash ambush. Uh, the unleash skill from the hammer skill 3. You can remove two bones. And now Cerus Eye will once you use the elite skill. It will give you this rotating eye that will keep converting bones from enemies to condition and it will be buckets of hit it will keep hitting the enemy which means every hit will count toward resetting force fortification faster this skill work as every hit you will do no cool down anything if you do a bucket of a hundred hit in a second all of them will count and every hit of them will lower the cooldown next time you use it by one second that goes for you and your bit which very good for Jacaranda, since this skill is 5 hits and can hit multiple enemies, this skill will also trigger 5 hits on the enemy while Jacaranda doing hits for herself. Those skills will land to and will count as the same, this field that will do 5 hits to the enemy around you. And now I of Soros will add to that, because also it is the coolest relic you can have, it's, it makes you feel like you are the boss not the player, so I'm running with it, I guess. This build can be very fun when you do things like that with it. But you can go with it, you can go with it, there is not really much of any efficient um, relic that actually push it. I think relic of the thief needs some adjustment, the 6 second only uh, is is very annoying. This one needed to be consistent, so why not keep it consistent, make it like 10 seconds or something like that. Especially that it starts flickering on 5 second cooldown, which is very annoying. You almost find it flickering all the time, it's very annoying to look at even. So, I'm going with Eye of the Cirrus, I'm not going with Relic of the Thief. This is the one I like. Now, let's talk a little bit more about our skill choices. We already explained we heal as one, will copy the boom back and forth between us and our bit. He will get a copy of us, we will get a copy of him. And the copy is adjusted to the duration that you can see in this list. But our bit already got a copy from our boons because of this trait, Fortifying Bond which mean our bit gain way more boons than us, which very reliable because even if you're fighting around other players, the, the priority to boons will be to players, not to uh, companions like your bit. But your bit will always get the boon no matter what it is. So you both will gain a huge amount of boons, everything you can keep it most of the time. Exploding Spores will give us might if we are unleashed once it land, uh, once we use it and protection uh, if our bit is unleashed and it will do a knockdown if all of the hits landed on the enemy so you want to be under the feet of the enemy when you use it and it will do six buckets of really powerful damage hit and some poison and when the knockdown happens uh, according to the state you're in so if your bit unleashed you get stability and if you are unleashed you get quickness we already talked about this trait now we also go with Signet of the Wild to increase our ferocity. It is a very good uh, defense bar break if you need it immobilized for whatever reason. However, like I said, you have way more than you need. You have this, you have immobilize from here, you have knockdown, you have chill, you have slow, and you can simply keep repeating them. You have even this from here, you have immobilize from here, so you never really need to use it. I would suggest you never press this button. I myself never press it no matter what I'm facing. Now last one here for the utility skills is mutate condition, it gives us barrier, it's a source of fury if you are unleashed, it's a source of figure if your bits unleashed, and it's your only stun break in the build, you always need a stun break, I don't care if you have 100% stability, you fight a mob that will corrupt it or remove it, you mess up your rotation, you're stunned. So you always need a stun break no matter what it is, and besides the fact that it's a stun break, it is a condition cleanse, and it will give us barrier. It will cleanse all your condition and give you stacks of vulnerability for every condition you had prior to using it. And last one is Force Fortification. We have almost permanent protection. We have Valve the Untame if you want to tank. We have our bit tanking for us since it have insane amount of toughness. Both our bits are tanky while we don't run a single point of toughness in this build. As you can see, it's basic character. 
and with force fortification you get access to 50% lowering uh, damage incoming to you and your bit so it help your bit survive and help you too and it will give you either vigor if you're on if your bit unleashed or super speed if you are unleashed allowing you to move way faster even now let's also talk about the food and the food is quite crucial i have a guide for my food use and uh, it's still up to date i explain my reason behind the uh, choices and stuff i will be putting it in the description for this build i'm running soul pastries it gives you 100 point concentration and 70 point power and experience scale it is very cheap it's be practically free it's very good food to run uh, it's actually 45 minutes uh, even but i run in them at the same time so i would keep both of them up on me like i said it is practically free it's very very cheap however the other one is a bit expensive which is holographic super cheese and it will give you power equal to 8% of your concentration and since we run it a lot we gain a lot of power because of it and will give you concentration equal to 3% of your precision this is a bit expensive uh, I admit a full stack even if by order it's uh, it can get you close to 5 golds but it will last you a long time and if you use both of them you get some quite uh, great stats bush to your build and that's what keeping me close to 90% and adding to my power nicely. So let's talk rotation. How does rotation work? So basically, you want to spam as much buckets of hit as possible with force fortification. Why is that? Because not only it will make you tanky, it will give you stability so you would face the enemy without fear of either dying or having huge hits or even getting CC'd because of stability. It will give you and your bit huge amount of boons and every boon will count toward our damage because of this trait, Bountiful Hunter. Every boon equal 1% in your damage. So you want to reset it as fast as possible to access it again and copy the boon back and forth between you and your bit. And for that we start on Warhorn and Axe. And we spam all of our hits and even the Unleash Ambush skill for the Axe is a bucket hit. So it will land multiples and also the Exploding Spores. And also the Unleash Beta skills will give you a field that will bolt 5 hits to 5 targets so if you have multiple enemies around you all that will count toward Reset and Force Fortification. And it's all part of your damage. And Jacaranda's hits herself is multiple buckets of damage also. After you do that, you do all your hits, you can land your CC while you're unleashed, you only change the state between Unleash your bit and Unleash yourself to trigger Restorative Strike with the protection and also to trigger the Unleash Ambush skill access, so you'll be able to land it on a 10 second cooldown. And those two skills, the first one have the exact same cooldown and this one have 20. So every time you leave Unleash state and have access to bit skills, you will press both of them to do their damage and then you enter again to do your Unleash Ambush skill. And every other time, like when you do it twice, you will press the three skills because this one will be coming off cooldown too, and then enter the Unleash Ambush and use your own skill. So, back to the main rotation. Use this one, you spam your skills, your CC land inside your Unleash state, you switch and trigger the bit skills, and you be inside Unleash Hammer, and you start with skill 4. It's three buckets of damage that will give you extra 20% against defiant bar enemies or CC'd enemies and 2% for each condition and X with the spores already give us poison, already give us chill, immobilize, vulnerability, bleed, weakness and even we get some condition from those bit skills and all that will count toward increasing its damage, hammer 4 and it is like we said multiple buckets of hits so if you still have the effect of force fortification on you it will count toward resetting it after that you go with skill 3 because it's 2 hit and then you go with 2 or 5 doesn't matter which in order first and then you rotate once you're done with this weapon and go again and now let's look at the rotation so remember I'm not running Surge of Rarity and if I run it this DBS will increase to about 1.5k if possible so you start with casting this skill and like I said you spam your skills like that and you heal. You leave uh, Unleash Ambush 
I will hit skill 2 again for its burst and then immediately switch weapons the 3 skill as we explained it came off cooldown now we go again with the same burst So, I want you to keep in mind that I was doing this with a ping that keeping me around 400 or more. It, when, it's only when skills stop casting the ping can go low. It's been like this so I can't really record very well. And I was still able to get my damage um, 15k, 14k. It, it can be around this. Like 15k or a little bit more if you're really accurate. But my ping is not helping. So as you can see we can start on um, quite a big burst and then be around 14.5 to 15k dbs. If you running for a little this number can go to about 16.5 to 16 or a bit less so it can increase your damage a little bit. But it is quite um, spammy you can cast your skill freely you can adapt to the situation if you can't go in stay on axe if you can't go in stay on hammer even longer if you want to it's really up to you and the damage will always be consistent around even in the most difficult situation to 13k so it is really high and now to compare it with other build I have already since Soto launched shared two of my dearest build which is my main hybrid untamed it's a focus on condition build more and uh, my druid build druid build had the highest dps it doesn't have a way to deal with con uh, boons on the enemy to remove them and it is solely condition build and it doesn't have the level of survivability that it is possible on hybrid untamed being the tankiest and the most with healing and everything so the most perfect was the hybrid untamed and the most damage was for druid however this build have the most relaxing style from stability i guess you never really get knocked down or if you really be accurate and copy uh, stability and whenever you f don't have stability from frost fortification you trigger a cc Outside of unleash state, when your bits unleashed, you gain more stability. You can get stability from the unleash ambush skill for the hammer, and you can copy it back and forth. It make you really um, like an unmoving rock, which is very good. It's also a power build, so whenever you need power, this build is the build to go to. If you don't want condition, if you want the highest power damage possible, like in court area map, it's very good. Any place you want to use uh, power exclusively, even in uh, festivals uh, when you need to solo champions in court area this is a build to go for you can play it anywhere it can do anything however the lower damage than the other guys is quite the problem and the other problems that happen this build already have everything it have the fury it have the might you can stack 25 stacks of might easily so when you're fighting alongside other people like in meta events there is nothing they would gift you so they don't increase your damage even higher so that is another drop point for it because you will always be at this round you will be 17 19k even while other builds will break 20 way easily so it's really up to you when you want to use it if you want to use it the access to the boons is very relaxing you're always very tanky with them you can heal for insane amount it is a bar build so enjoying bar or if you need a power build in some point it is the go to so that's it for the video, if you have any further questions put them in the comments, don't forget to check the description because I have other videos, the one for uh, the food, the other builds, everything always there, always check the description. And feel free to use the timestamp, leave me any questions if you want, don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and I'll be seeing you next time, peace.